Yes. Now, I understand. Yes, I understand. Right. Mr. Wade, I got a guy here says he was kidnapped by Martians. Said they took him home with him and they all went swimming in the canals. Says he's got pictures. Hmm. If that's the best we can do. Uh, hold. Uh, Mr. Wade, Mr. Wade, uh... There's still the Reverend Stafford's ex-chauffeur. Now, he swears that Stafford made three attempts on his wife's life, but he won't budge on his price. Pay it, Frank. You're the managing editor, not the accountant. It's only money. You know, paper clips. Oh, Michelle. How are you doing? Can I see you alone? That's an invitation I'll always accept. Look, I'm a little nervous about saying this, but I'd like to beg off the judge's story. Michelle, we went all through this. And last I agreed, week. I know. But the more of these I do, the queasier I feel. Nobody said it was pretty. A lot of what we do isn't pretty. Iran Gate wasn't pretty. Watergate wasn't pretty. For God's sake, Harlan, where's the comparison? What we're doing is sleaze. The hell it is. We provide a service, a kind of journalism that the people can't get anywhere else. Kicking hell out of commie-loving politicians, drugged-out actresses, doctors who suppress cancer cures. It's... it's our duty under the First Amendment. I've heard that song before, Harlan. It's just not playing right for me. Michelle. You're just tired. Burned out. Sort of goes with being a good reporter. I need your help, sweetheart. Those others out there... Glorified hacks. If I take you off the judge's story, I may as well forget it. I can't afford that. The paper can't afford it. Harlan, when I came here, you promised... I know what I promised. I'll stand by it. Then why haven't you answered my memos? I've sent you at least five on that chain of nursing homes. You get me what I want, and I'll give you what you want. You have my word, Michelle. I wish I could believe that. Believe it. Hit a home run, baby. I'm counting on you. And you know I know I'll be grateful. Say a week in Bermuda, Hawaii, Cozumel, anywhere you want to go. On me, first class, with everything thrown in. Wonderful man. I'm having a medal struck in his honor. Save one for me. I don't believe it, Paul. Surprised, huh? Tell me you're thrilled, too. What on earth are you doing here? I'm working on a case with Perry, which gives us plenty of time to get reacquainted. Want to buy me some lunch? Paul, I am up to here with assignments. Honestly, I'm really jammed. Oh, sorry, this is Rick Connor, my partner in crime. Rick, hi. Well, um, you know, he looks pretty confident. Why don't you let him do a single today, huh? I'd love to, Paul, but I'm already late for an appointment. Okay, well, you leave me no choice. I'm going to come with you. I want you to wait right here. I'll be right back. Where is he going? Mr. Wade. Who are you? You remember me, Paul Drake. That's for you. What is this? It's a summons and complaint for libel. Compliments of Senator Langley. Have a nice day. Hey, you can't come. Oh, I was afraid we laid it on a little thick for that Langley feature. <laughs> Wouldn't you know the lawyer on this is Perry Mason? Mason? Frank, I want you to drop everything you're doing. Dig up what you can on Mason. If you can't find anything, invent it. The usual. So you consider yourself a good friend of Judge McGill. Isn't that right? Uh, well, yes. Uh, he said hello to me every morning. Uh... And knowing his lovely wife, you must have been shocked when he and that pretty, long-legged secretary of his came sneaking in here that night. Very shocked. Uh, yes, very shocked. 
And you never did see them come out, did you? She stayed here all night? I didn't see them come out, no. Excuse me. Judge Sanford McGill, in line for the state Supreme Court vacancy, has been having a secret love affair with his pretty long-legged secretary, a close friend confided. I was very shocked, the friend explained, when the two lovebirds slipped into a classy midtown hotel and didn't come out until morning. Who am I kidding? Not me. How about you? I wish I could. Why did you have to show up anyway? Did I advertise for a conscience? Does this mean that I have to pay for lunch? There you are. You're not dressed. The party starts at 2 o'clock. We're not going. Not going? You don't feel well. Oh, I'm feeling fine. You know where the Society for Homeless Children is holding the event this year? Yes, at the, uh, the Melbourne Estate. According to this, mm -hmm. it was recently purchased by Harlan Wade. Now you know why we're not going. You're on the Society's advisory board. We are not going. But... Not even for the children. If I can't get circulation up, the only thing we'll be publishing around here is our obituary. Huh. Nice of you folks to join us. Sorry we're late, Harlan. <sighs> What'd you get from the dorm? Nothing. He suddenly had an attack of conscience. Catches up to all of us sooner or later. That's too bad. But we'll get it. Just up the ante. Oh, you were supposed to see him at 10. It's 1.30 now. Where have you been all this time? Working on something else. The chain of nursing homes. Handled right, the story could get us a Pulitzer. If you saw what Rick and I did this morning, old people abandoned and dying, you'd know what I mean. Nursing homes. Old people. Okay, kid. Go win us a Pulitzer. Thanks, Harlan. You won't regret it. You'll see. Connor. I was wrong about her, Frank. Very wrong. I want her out of here today. Dr. and Mrs. Clayman. Still the most attractive couple in town. Glad you could come. General, you're not leaving already. My wife isn't feeling well. I thought we would go home early. Oh, I am sorry. Uh, I know this is a terrible imposition, sir, but I wonder if you could pose for just one picture with me. It isn't too often that I get the opportunity to be photographed with a great war hero. Well, another time. Oh, please, General, there may not be another time. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Well, to be quite frank, Mr. Wade, I'd rather be photographed with a snake. What's with him? You. You see, the general came by here to help a good cause. Right? So why don't you just forget who he is? And while you're at it, call off that pack of wolves that call themselves reporters, because we don't need your kind of stories. Understand, Harlan? <laughs> a great party. You would pull your gun at your own party? Ortega, what kind of way is that for a banker to behave? I was merely getting your attention, since you don't answer phone calls. Maybe I knew why you were calling. I am sure you do. It's about the smear you're planning with me as the target. What smear? I'm in the business of news, human interest. Then you should be more careful of your sources. Am I clear? Maybe we can talk later. When things get quiet, in the meantime, enjoy yourself. I intend to.
Next time, let's try to get a few friends here. Who? No, thank you. Oh, thank you. You don't care for any? I'm here because I promised. I said nothing about having a good time. Jason, I'm Harlan Wade. Is that so? We've never met, but I recognize you from your pictures. You must be Ms. Street. Thank you, yes. How do you do? Would you excuse us a minute for a little business talk? Mr. Wade, I'm not going to discuss the lawsuit. I think you'll recall dates and places. You and Miss Street. Very inventive. But I can get bellmen, maids, hotel staff, others who will swear to occasions when you and Miss Street stayed together at the same hotel. How shocked they were by your behavior. To buy all that, you must have a very large editorial budget. Largest in the world. Mr. Wade. I'd save your money for your attorney's fees. Young lady, I think we've enjoyed this extraordinary event long enough. Mr. Wade? Doorman will get it. Paul, I told you. I've got at least three hours at the word processor to get this story out. Wade is never going to print your story. Yes, he will. He has to. The only way I'm ever going to get off the informer is to make a name for myself. This is my shot. Good luck. If I make it before midnight, is that all right? If you make it before breakfast, it's all right. Any coffee left, Rick? I've got a ton of work. Michelle, I tried to find you, warn you, but I didn't know. Did Wade say where I was supposed to pick up my check? Look, Michelle, getting canned isn't the end of the world. Why don't we go out for a drink, get you calmed down? You know something, Rick? For a second, you sounded just like him. Don't. You're a good guy, and he's a vicious, sadistic hypocrite. Michelle, where are you going? To show Wade what I think of him. He's not getting away with this. Everything okay out here? Yeah. All right, all right. Hey, you doing good. I'm gonna go back in the house. Yeah. Don't shoot, Harlan. You could spoil a lovely evening. I used your bathroom to freshen up. I hope you don't mind. What do you want? Harlan, I need your help. You want me to kill the story behind your divorce, don't you? Oh, I'd be very grateful. You really think I'd give up that story for anything you've got to offer? Good night, Marianne. Great security, Moretti. Sorry, Mr. Wade. She must have. She must yeah, have. Yeah, she must have. Why don't you get me a pair of trunks and take a swim? Sorry, Miss Benty. Mr. Wade's in the pool. Strict instructions. No more visitors. Tell Mr. Wade I don't give a damn about his instructions. Mr. Moretti, this is Matthews. Yeah, Moretti. Yeah, right. Mr. Wade, Shell Bindi's on her way in. D 
the cleanup crew should be done with the party now. I'm going to go secure the place. You have three minutes to say anything you want to. After that, I expect to hear good night, thanks for the memories, and I'll see you around. Oh, no, it's not that easy. You lied to me. You're young, Michelle. Really naive. You knew what my paper was like when you came to work here. I gotta hand it to you, Wade. You did one smooth con job on me. It wasn't all con. I liked you, kid. You've been a little nicer to me. Who knows, I might have given you anything you wanted. Wade, you really are a sleaze. I'm only sorry I didn't see it sooner. Careful, baby. You could fall on your face. I know I was speeding. 70 in a 55 zone. May I see your license, please? car, please. Why? I'm afraid you'll have to come with me, ma'am. What's wrong? There's been a murder. You're wanted for questioning. What's going to happen to the lawsuit now that Wade is dead? Well, if the new management agrees to print retractions, we'll drop the suit. Morning, Paul. Good morning. You get to see Michelle. Yes. How's she holding up? She's feeling a lot better. I don't think Perry's going to see her. Who do you think uh, might have killed Wade? I think we could fill a football stadium with suspects. Why do you think they're so convinced that Michelle did it? The party was over. Everyone had gone home. Mm -hmm. Michelle was left alone with him. Then he was found dead. When the police finally caught up with her, she was speeding away from the scene, so... There was one other thing. What's that? Her fingerprints were on the murder weapon. It must have happened when I was leaving. I slipped and grabbed the statue to keep from falling. Mr. Mason, are they sure that's what was used to kill him? I've just gone over the police report. Wade was found floating in his pool. Fragments of the statue were found in his skull. It just doesn't make sense, the thought of me wanting to kill Wade. The prosecution's going to make a compelling case. Wade fired you. You were furious. You fought. He wouldn't relent. You lost control, grabbed the nearest handy object, and kept hitting him till he was dead. I didn't do it. Of course you didn't do it. morning. Uh, I should have expected to see you here, but it's always something of a surprise. A pleasant one, I hope. Of course. Your Honor, this was not a death resulting from reckless conduct or even voluntary manslaughter. The people allege 
that this was a murder of premeditation and deliberation by this defendant, we respectfully request that bail be denied. Your Honor, I've known Michelle Bente for almost two years, and I can assure the court she is a responsible young woman with substantial ties to the community. She is a professional journalist who... Journalist? Your Honor, this young woman is a procurer of libelous misstatements and innuendos for a weekly tabloid that mocks the First Amendment while it pads its corporate wallet. We're all spreads... acquainted with the confidential informer. I would remind my distinguished colleague, it is my client, not this journal, who is the accused here. Miss Bente denies any involvement with this death and is looking forward to her day in court. The court is granting bail in this case in the amount of $200,000. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, Wade was sitting here at the edge of the pool. She grabbed the statue. Someone grabbed the statue. And when Wade turned his head, she smashed his skull in. I should have never left him alone with her, not the mood she was in. Mr. Moretti, from the time Miss Bente left the estate to when you discovered the body, how much time had elapsed? Minutes. Three, four max. Wait a minute. If you're saying somebody else had a chance to do it, impossible. It wasn't time. Besides, nobody could have got off this state. Everything was buttoned down tight. Nobody in, nobody out. You're positive. I'm paid to be positive. Anything else, Mr. Mason? I understand Mr. Wade always carried a gun wherever he went. That's right. Did he have it with him at the time he was murdered? I saw him put it in the pocket of his robe just before he came down for his swim. Then he put the robe over there on that chair. Lieutenant, there's no mention of the gun in the police report. Well, no gun was found. Then it is missing. Well, which point, Mr. Mason? Well, it wasn't found on Ms. Bente when she was arrested. This estate is certainly well guarded. I wonder how it could have disappeared. She must have taken it with her and uh, dumped it along the road. Why would she take it, Lieutenant? The gun wasn't the murder weapon. How should I know? How oh, indeed. Thank you both for your cooperation. Well, what about letters? Did Wade receive any actual death threats? Just your run-of-the-mill hate mail. Let's face it, anybody who's been the subject of one of Wade's smear jobs would love to see him dead. What about, uh, like, a story that might have still been in progress? Kill Wade before it's even published? Yeah, maybe. In an attempt to keep the story from getting to print, it's a lot stronger motivation than revenge after the fact. You know, that makes a lot of sense. I think it does, too. Except most of what Wade publishes is just rumor, innuendo. Well, maybe he had something a little bit more concrete this time. What were some of the stories he was working on? All sorts of things. I've got notes on all of them at the office. Uh, notes. What about uh, Wade's file? <laughs> Wade keeps all the juicy stuff and evidence locked in his safe. You have a combination? Uh-uh. Hmm. Well, let's go get your notes. I think I'd better get dressed first. <laughs> Michelle, let me ask you something. If this guy was such a lowlife, why'd you end up working for him? Best job I could get. Why? This condo, car, half a dozen credit cards that go along with it? Yeah, it's part of the trap. But you know, reporters at the Informer make three, four times the going rate of other papers, plus all this. You start out working there thinking you'll just put aside a little nest egg and then leave to do something important. But you get real used to those big bucks. Guess I don't have to worry about that anymore. No, not anymore. Paul, it's not locked. Here. 
camino. the simplest explanation is that there was information that was incriminating so it had to be extracted before it fell into the wrong hands if that's true why take all four files you're sure only four are missing positive wade kept them together in a special folder the hot file he called it when i checked the safe after the break and it was gone and with it all the evidence wade had dug up on general Sorensen. Oscar Ortega and the doctor and Mrs. Clayman. There's information on all four of them in my notes. Stella, are those four on the guest list? Yes. They all seem to have been at the party. All right, I'll check them out. Your breakfast yet? Yes, I did. And you're still here? Paul, we need that safe cracker. Right away. Michelle, if you're up to it, would you help me, please? Let's go. You really love to get on his case. <laughs> yes, I guess I do. You want me to type up those notes? As soon as I've checked them through. Yes. Miss Street, these are for you. Where would you like me to set them? Oh, right over there. That's okay. The tip's been taken care of. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Strange. Ever see a bellhop that won't accept a tip? Maybe he's independently wealthy. Who are they from? Uh, they're uh, from the hotel. I guess when you take an expensive suite, you get an expensive welcome. Actually, looks good for a green horse. It's my day off. I'm hungover, so if you want another screaming session, try primal therapy. I won't take long, but I'm in a little jam. I'm deeply moved. Jack, I need some money. You've frozen our account. Your and... next check will be on time, Thursday a week, just as the agreement says. 30,000, Jack. I need 30,000. Temporary alimony isn't going to cover that. 30,000 for what? I can't say. You're being blackmailed, aren't you? How would you know that? 
Unless you're being blackmailed, too, aren't you? You're getting off easy. I'm supposed to cough up a... Excuse me, may I help you? Sorry if I'm intruding, doctor. I'm Michelle Venti's attorney. My name's Mason. Well, I'm sorry for her. She deserves a medal. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that's all the help I can give her. I take it you had a problem with Harlan Wade. And since you're here, Mr. Mason, you already know that. And you already know we were both at the party the day he was killed. Care for a beer? No, thank you. I hate to rush you, Mr. Mason, but my husband and I were going over some important business. So if there's something you'd like to know, please ask it and then go. I understand from the police report you left Wade's party so quickly nobody seems to have seen you leave. I left early. I was bored to tears. If necessary, a friend will confirm that I was home tucking my son in bed when the happy event occurred. Friend? That's right. Bobby Conwell. Oh, yes. Bobby Conwell. Wasn't he one of the reasons for your pending divorce from Dr. Clayman? Who told you that? Wade had reporters researching rumors about both of you. Stay away from me, Mr. Mason. Far away. Oh, uh, Jack. What we discussed before, I need it today. Or I swear it'll take more than a court order for you to visit your son again. Gonna be one hell of a divorce, Mason. But she'll go down like the Titanic. I've got enough on her to get custody of my son and to leave her scrounging for nickels. I'm betting on a draw. Doctor, just where were you when... I was here, getting plastered, feeling sorry for myself. Alone? Of course. Of course. He's not there. You think he'd be at the park? Thanks. I'll try him there. Grab that. I'll take this. We're out of here. Well, well, look who's here. I'm just getting my things, Frank. No, no, I'm glad you came by. Look, Michelle, uh, how much you want for your story? Rick, uh, get up here and get some pictures, will you? Now, it's got to be an exclusive now, because I don't want you talking to anybody else. Frank, that's the sickest thing I've ever heard. And I've heard a lot around here. Yeah, well, why? I mean, somebody's going to do the story. It might as well be us. Huh? Sounds like Harlan Wade's philosophy. Come on, let's go. You're going to regret this. You're going to regret this. Why don't you back off? Come on, you, you, you got a camera. Will you use it? Mr. Mason. May I sit down? You must have made quite an impression on my secretary to find me here. I told her it was a matter of life and death. <laughs> my life? Wade's death. I mean, it is Wade we're talking about. That's right. And I am a suspect. Now, why would I want to kill my friend Wade? I understand he had his people working on a rumor about your bank being in the money laundering business that its top clients are drug dealers? That's a lie. Is it? For the sophisticated men, you're very gullible, Mason. Maybe what Wade had in his safe was proof of your bank's dealings. Maybe Wade was killed to stop him from exposing you. What the hell is this about a safe? It's in the late edition, Mr. Ortega. Somebody broke into Wade's safe and took a number of files, yours among them. Why would I go to the trouble of stealing my own file so that I could blackmail myself? That's right. Whoever got into that safe called me an hour ago. He told me he had information that could destroy me and my bank. He wanted a hundred thousand for it. And? I don't pay blackmail, Mr. Mason. For a lot less than a hundred thousand, I can hire a specialist to deal with the situation more permanently. Now, if you'll excuse me, I like to be at the bank before it closes. Stunning maneuver, Pasquale. Very first rate, but. Checkmate, I'm afraid. 
<laughs> My dear Michelle, you're free again. Only on bail. I want you to meet a good friend. Paul Drake, How do you do? Cyril How do you do? Cyril's been very helpful to some of the reporters on the paper. I'm a marvelous character witness. My credentials are impeccable. My record is spotless. And he'll testify to anything for a price. That's right. What have you for me today? I need some information. Michelle tells me that you know everything that goes on in the city. Something tells me we're going to talk about the underworld. Cyril, it's important. Last night, I had a run-in with a safecracker. With wide shoulders, uh, chains on the wrist, around the neck. He's very good at his job. Do you have any ideas who it might be? Yes, he's so boring. He's also very dangerous. If I were you, I'd stay very wide of him. Well, I need his name. Would you believe he's called Animal? Where can we find him? He usually frequents the Three Aces. Probably still does. Thanks, Cyril. I owe you one. Be extremely careful. This animal's no pussycat. He likes to hurt people. We've met. Thank you. Where do you suppose I can find a cab right now? Meaning go home like a good little girl because Cyril says he's dangerous? <laughs> Paul, I can handle myself. I'm sure you can. You know what? I think I'm going to rent a car. Paul, you're not going to find a rental car around here. Use mine. I'll get a cab. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. It saves me some time. I'll call you when I have something. Go home. <laughs> Impressive, General. They're weekend soldiers. They're running fast. They'll be very effective. In whose army? It's hard to say. But they probably wind up in Central America. Have you been doing this long? No, both Captain Rivers and myself are retired. We're volunteers, that's all. Fills in some long hours and some very long days. You don't sound like a man who's ready for retirement. Far from it. Mr. Mason, what brings you here? Some files concerning you were stolen from Harlan Wade's safe last night. You're certainly not suggesting that I took them. I'm suggesting that you're being blackmailed. Don't dance with me, Mr. Mason. I don't like cute politicians and clever lawyers. You're implying that I had something to do with Wade's death. Well, I didn't. I went directly home from that party, saw my wife to bed, and fell asleep in the den watching TV. Would you be able to prove that? Unfortunately, no. I didn't think I'd have to have an alibi for a murder I had no motive to commit. I can think of one. Isn't it true you were about to be appointed to the board of directors of the South Wing Corporation? How'd you find out about that? What's important is Wade found out about it. And a scandal involving you that went all the way back to Vietnam. Sir, do we have to listen to this? No. Mr. Mason, I just overstayed his welcome. I enjoyed every minute of it. What's the matter with you? This is a restricted area. Did you see the warning sign back there? If there had been a sign, General, my driver and I surely would have seen it. You and I both know that. 
See what the hell happened to it. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for the ride. I enjoyed every minute of it. Well, what do you think? Just great, Dylan. Especially this one on Dr. Clayman. Where'd you get it? A Jerry Stringer from Kansas City. He came uh -huh. up with it. Would you like it poured now, or shall oh. we let it chill for a few minutes more? I'm so sorry. Uh, we didn't order that. It must be some mistake. Well, it was ordered for you, Miss Street. Uh, by whom? Well, I wasn't given a name. Well, uh, just leave it right there and come back in a little bit, would you please? Maybe he's married. Or maybe he's uh, just shy. <coughs> Must be some mistake. Well, work on it later. Right now, I need you to check on the caterer, all the temporary help at Wade's party. I want their precise schedules, what they did, when they left, and unless you've made some plans I know nothing about. Never. Never? Hardly ever. you money <clears throat> and mess me up see uh, i got a job i was talking to your friends and they were telling me that you're the best i ain't got no friends now come on animal i mean uh, mr randall you mind if i call you that now we are talking about <clears throat> big money here not the kind of money you made last night i don't know what you're talking about mister well Come on now, he laid the whole thing out for me. Said you pulled it off nice and clean. That's why I gotta have you working for me. I got to. You laid what out? Come on, Mr. Animal. You got a short memory. <laughs> you know what I think? I think you're fishing. I think I know you. Maybe you ought to get your face out of mine before I break yours. What are you doing here? You didn't really think I'd go home, did you? Here, I brought you some coffee. Lack of sugar, right? Yes. I did think you'd go home. And no, I don't like sugar in my coffee. I'm surprised you forgot. Actually, I just guessed. Where is he? Right there. Well, Doctor, you're a fine artist. Thank you. What's on your mind, Mason? You told me you were on your ranch at the time Wade was murdered. That's right. Your answering service called you there three times during that evening. One of them was an emergency you never picked up. Maybe I was in the shower or asleep. You can do better than that, doctor. All right. I was at a singles bar, trying to find a girl, any girl. I was lonely, drunk, but I went back to the ranch alone. Why are you picking on me, Mason? Do you really think I killed Wade just to keep my divorce out of his scandal sheet? No. 
But you did have something much more damaging to hide. What are you talking about? A young doctor, much older and very rich wife, suddenly and mysteriously dies. Self-administered overdose of insulin. Kansas City, 1967. You were almost indicted. Finally, the district attorney dropped the whole thing, insufficient evidence. You inherited $2 million, moved here. If Wade printed the Kansas story along with your present divorce, you would have been ruined. I didn't kill him, Mason. No one that I know of has said that you did, Dr. Clayman. No one. Stay here. Go pay him a visit. I always wondered how Rick could afford this place. Maybe he couldn't. That's why he's moonlighting. He hired the animal? He's our blackmailer? This is his place. Wait a minute. Looks like somebody beat us here. not been a good day. Paul, relax, he'll show. Before or after I'm deaf. If he's alive, he'll be here. This is his second home. Another drink? I don't think so. You know, I never really did thank you for getting Kremace to take my case. There's no time like the present. Get out of here, Doug. I mean it. One of your former associates? Now I know what it feels like to be fair game. Oh, no. That look familiar? Your partner's here. Come on. Be this.
Go get help. Come on. Lieutenant Donahue, referring to the report which you're holding in your hand, which is marked People's Exhibit H, what was the cause of death? The uh, victim died of a massive cerebral hemorrhage resulting from one or more blows uh, by a blunt object to the base of the skull approximately here. This piece of carved marble, which is marked People's Exhibit A, do you recognize it? Yes, I do. What is it, and where was it found? Well, that portion of the statue was found at the bottom of the pool underneath the victim, and uh, those portions were found on the deck nearby. Could this have been the murder weapon? Yes, the um, fragments from the statue were found in the wound on the uh, victim's head, and, of course, the... Uh, Portions that you see there were found uh, close by the decedent's body. Now, the statue is weighty, but it's not terribly heavy. Tell me, could a woman lift it, do you think? Objection. No foundation in proper opinion. Sustained. Uh, Lieutenant, one last question. Fingerprints were found on the smooth portion of the statue. Were those identified? Yes, they match those of the defendant. Thank you, Lieutenant. No further questions. Mr. Mason? Uh, Lieutenant Donahue. Lieutenant Donahue, the medical examiner's report also indicates the presence of several other deep bruises to the back of Mr. Wade's neck. Is that correct? Yes, it is. So it's possible that the killer inflicted additional blows to Mr. Wade's head either before or after the one that caused his death. Well, I suppose... The Objection calls for conclusion on the part of the witness. Withdraw the question. Lieutenant... The defense has learned that Mr. Wade carried a gun with him at all times. Does this agree with your findings? Yes, we have uh, statements to that effect. Huh? Isn't it true that Mr. Wade had the gun with him in his robe pocket when he went down to the pool? Uh, according to Mr. Moretti, it uh, is all in my report there. Now, when I first entered this case, I asked you if you'd found that gun. Now, I'll ask you once again. Have you found it? Uh, no, sir. The, since the gun had no bearing on the crime one way or the other, and assuming that the defendant took it with her and disposed of it... That's all. That's all. Mr. Moretti, is the woman you admitted to the estate that night present in the court? Yes, she is. Would you point her out, please? That's her right there indicating the defendant. Now, uh, Mr. Moretti, were you with Mr. Wade when the defendant arrived at the house? Yes, I was. Was that before or after the party had ended? It was a long time after the party ended. Was Ms. Benty expected? <laughs> Are you kidding? Mr. Wade had just fired her that afternoon. So... The three of you were alone by the pool. And then you left... To secure the estate. Leaving the defendant alone with her former employer, the man who had fired her that very afternoon. Objection. Argument. Sustained. Strike Mr. Esnett's statement. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Moretti. How did Miss Benty appear to you? How did she seem? Uh, angry? Uh, upset? Objection. Improper opinion. All right, I will withdraw the question. 
Uh, Mr. Moretti, only a few more uh, questions, but they are vital ones. Did you see Ms. Benty leave the estate that night? Yes, I did. How did she leave? She left very fast. She peeled rubber going down the driveway. W uh, when was that? It was when I was walking back to the pool. Right before I found Mr. Wade floating in the pool. Now, how much time would you say actually elapsed from the time you saw Ms. Benty leave the estate until the time you discovered Mr. Wade's body? Two, three minutes, Max. Two to three minutes. Mr. Moretti, could anyone else have left the estate after Ms. Benty drove off? Absolutely not. Not unless they could fly. I secured the gates personally after she left. So let me tell you something, pal. The beating you took oh, last night on. is nothing come compared on. with what's coming up. Look, I wasn't black enough, so why did you right? give me a break? We're going to be hanging coats off your nose in a minute. I'm trying to help you. You know, you're not the world's most popular guy these days. You know that? It's up to you. Okay. Okay. I was in hock up to my neck. When I found out about the stories we were doing, I saw a chance to bail out. So when Wade got killed, I hired the animal. I got my hands on the files. All it took was a couple of phone the calls. Files, Connor. Make them public knowledge in your home free. From the cops, too. So you, you give them Mr. Animal and you make a deal. Come on. Files are in my locker. Spartan Athletic Club. These guys that made your face so pretty last night, you recognize them. Who sent them? Sure. I took pleasure in having it done. The only thing I regret is that my people are screwed up. I wanted the file on me. The one the blackmailer had. All I bought was trouble. Lately, I seem to be paying too much for too little. Meaning what? Wade owed a lot of money. He had thousands of promissory notes floating around town. I bought them all up at a premium. So if he printed any scandal about you, you could have thrown him right into bankruptcy. You got it. He and I made a deal at his party. His silence for his solvency. You see, Mason, all you can do is nail me for turning a two-bit blackmailer inside out. But as for murdering Wade, why would I want to do that? I had him in my pocket. Of course, you can prove all that. Photocopies of Wade's promissory notes. The originals are in my safe. You want to save that girl, Mason? You're gonna have to find another Patsy. What's up? Mm. Coffee? No, thanks. I had it in the shower. Sorry about that. What happened? You find Wade's missing gun? I'd like you to find a Lieutenant Colonel Stanton McCauley retired as soon as you can. He lives somewhere in this area. How does he fit in? He served with General Sorensen in Vietnam. He was one of the junior officers who investigated the general on some rather serious charges. Find out if McCauley thinks any of it's true. It's all here. Hi. Hi. Thought you wanted to get some rest. I was going to until I saw this. This hits the newsstands tomorrow morning. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
I don't remember kissing you. Welcome to Harlan Wade's photo retouch lab. You might also notice that my neckline has dropped about two or three sexy inches. Wait till my mother sees this. Don't tell me your mother reads the confidential informer. Are you kidding me? She wouldn't miss it. You want to get some dinner? This doesn't bother you? Not if it doesn't bother Paul's mother. <laughs> Come on, let's make some more headlines. Miss Street? Right through there. Excuse me, um, this just arrived for you. For me? Oh, that, that won't be necessary. The tip's been taken care of. Thanks. Well, open it. Perfume? Four hundred dollars worth. Sounds serious. I just don't understand what's going on. You know the flowers that were sent the other day? They weren't from the hotel. And, and then the, the champagne, and then this. Who's sending these to me? What does the card say? From an admirer. Well, you've done it again. Mr. Moretti, yesterday you testified that on the night of the murder, nobody could have left the estate after Miss Bente did. In fact, she was the last one out. Is that still your testimony? Yes, it is. But... You're not positive, are you? I believe I told you once before, Mr. Mason, I'm paid to be positive. Yes, you did. But you told the police you saw Mrs. Clayman in Mr. Wade's house long after the other guests had gone home. She was there, all right. I saw her come running out of his bedroom just before he went and took his final swim. You didn't see her leave the estate, did you? No. Now, would you look at that young blonde lady seated in the second row? Miss Henderson, please stand. You recognize her, do you not? Yeah, I know her. Wasn't she one of the cocktail waitresses employed by the catering service at the party? Yeah, I believe she was. And she left with the catering van after Miss Benty did? No. Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe she did. Mr. Moretti, you testified earlier that from the time Miss Benty left to the time you discovered the body, only two to three minutes had elapsed. Yeah, that's pretty close to the time. But you're paid to be positive. Isn't it true you delayed the catering van's departure at least eight to ten minutes while you tried to um, hustle Miss Henderson's telephone number from her? Eight to ten minutes? Excuse me, but it's never taken me eight to ten minutes to get any girl's phone number. <laughs> eight to ten minutes, Mr. Moretti. The gate guard, the van driver, and Miss Henderson will all testify. Maybe it might have been a little longer. It was a little longer. Uh, thank you, Miss Henderson. Mr. Moretti, if I now understand your testimony correctly, it is entirely possible that someone hiding in the house could have gone down to the pool, waited for Miss Bente to leave, killed Mr. Wade, and then fled the estate. Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. I calls... have no further questions, Your Honor. Yeah, I drive that old van. Logan caters. Uses me a lot. How many people did you drive out to the Wade party, Mr. Forbes? Uh, eight, but I didn't know any of them, though. You're sure it was eight? 
Now, there's one thing I can do, and I can do good. I can drive, and I can count. And when I said that there was eight people penciling on that, that uh, what you call that roster thing, that's precisely how many there was, and that is precisely how many I took. When you left the Wade estate, Mr. Forbes, after the party was over, was your van full? He ain't had an empty seat in the house. <laughs> how many passengers does your van carry? Carries. Let's see now. Let me figure this out. It's, it's got nine seats plus mine. So, nine. In other words, Mr. Forbes, you brought eight people out to the party, but took nine back to town. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. You, you're pretty good. <laughs> now, you're not trying to say that I helped no murderer escape. No, Mr. Forbes, it's just simple arithmetic. I've no further questions. Mr. Reston? Nothing, Your Honor. You may step down. Oh, defense calls Marion Clayman to the stand. Mrs. Clayman, you've heard testimony to the effect. What I've heard is beneath contempt. May I finish my question? I'll finish it for you. Yes, I stayed behind and waited for Wade after the party was over. And yes, I was in his bedroom with him just before Mr. Moretti saw me leave. But no, I did not kill him. Thank you. Mrs. Clayman, you will please restrain yourself from doing anything more than answering counsel's questions. Is that understood? Your Honor, what Mr. Mason is about to do is to smear me with innuendos about why I was in Mr. Wade's bedroom, you my past not relationship with him. To anticipate counsel's questions, nor speculate on what he may be going to do. You will simply wait for counsel's question and respond. Is that clear? Yes, perfectly. Thank you. You may continue, Mr. Mason. Mrs. Clayman. Weren't you waiting in Mr. Wade's bedroom in order to persuade him not to publish a story about your impending divorce? I guess so. In fact, you didn't want him to publish anything in any way that touched on the divorce. Isn't that true? Oh, what's the use? No, I didn't want him to go within a million miles of it. How did you plan to persuade him not to publish that story? I offered to do whatever he wanted if he'd keep it out of his lousy paper. And did you? Objection, Your Honor. There is no relevancy here. Mr. Mason is harassing the witness. Your Honor, I am attempting to prove that my client wasn't the only one with the opportunity and the motive to kill. Sustained. I'll not allow the question. No. It seemed he preferred to take a cold swim. Mrs. Clayman, you are not to answer questions to which I have already sustained objections. The answer will be stricken. You may continue, Mr. Mason. You were married before your marriage to Dr. Clayman, were you not? That was a long time ago. I was just a kid. Back in Texas, wasn't it? Yes. Isn't it true you never divorced? And you knew you weren't divorced when you married Dr. Clayman? No. Mrs. Clayman, isn't it true that Harlan Wade discovered all of this and threatened to publish his discoveries? Thus making your marriage to Dr. Clayman a nullity, depriving you of support and community property? Mrs. Clayman? Look, I knew that Wade had found out, and that if he published the story, I'd be finished, ruined. But I didn't kill him. Didn't you? Mr. Moretti testified that he did not see you actually leave the estate. No one else did either. Objection, Your Honor. Mrs. Clayman is not on trial here. Mr. Mason is argumentative. Your Honor, I'm merely attempting to establish that my client might not have been the last person to leave, that in fact, Mrs. Clayman 
could have been the ninth person in the band. I'm sustaining, Mr. Mason. Mrs. Clayman, you're acquainted with Miss Hillary Scott? Yes, she babysits my children. Isn't it true you had to pay Miss Scott overtime because it was nearly midnight when you returned from the party? Where were you all that time? Objection. No relevancy. Mr. Mason is harassing and humiliating this witness. Order. Order. Mr. Mason, I have been tolerant up to now, but this concludes this line of questioning. Yes, it does. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Did she do it? What do you think? No. No. General, would you describe yourself as a man of action? I would describe myself as a former soldier who's seen combat, great deal of combat. Fought in two wars. And you've killed. I was an airborne rager, Mr. Mason, not a pastry chef. Meaning you have killed? Yes. Have you ever killed with your bare hands? Objection. Relevancy. It would appear that Mr. Mason is attempting to put the entire state on trial for murder in the bizarre hope of distracting this court from the real issue, the guilt or innocence of Michelle Benty. Your Honor, my sole purpose is to deal with the real issue by proving to this court that my client is innocent. You may proceed, Mr. Mason. When you did kill, General, how did you regard your enemy? As an enemy. Is that how you felt about Harlan Wade? That he was an enemy to be hated and feared? I wouldn't say feared. You didn't fear him? Even though he was going to publish articles purporting to prove that while serving in Vietnam, you participated in the selling of millions of dollars of medical supplies to the black market, that you were a thief, and worse, a traitor to humanity? Those would have been Wade's allegations. All those charges made against me were untrue. Anybody who knows me knows that they are lies. I didn't fear Holland Wade or his paper. Wouldn't Wade's allegations, indeed, wouldn't Wade himself have ruined your chance to become executive vice president of the South Wing Corporation, a position paying hundreds of thousands of dollars a year? Anybody would kill for reasons like that would have to be insane, Mr. Mason. There are many kinds of insanity, aren't there, General? Yes, they are. Do you recall an occasion during the Vietnam War when a man saved your life by killing with his bare hands? Isn't it true, General? that you and the Colonel McCauley were saved by a young Jeep driver, a black belt expert, who killed two of your attackers with his bare hands. Yes, that's right. What, General, is that heroic soldier's name? You're talking about my former aide of camp, my friend, Mr. James Rivers. Captain Rivers, you heard General Sorensen describe you as a friend. Isn't it true that after you saved his life, he recommended you for officer's candidate school? And after you were commissioned, he had you assigned to him? Yes, sir. And you resigned your commission how long after he retired? I believe it was the very next day. The next day? You really are devoted. 
Is that something I should be ashamed of, Mr. Mason? No, no. Now, Captain Rivers, would you please tell the court just where you were at the moment Harlan Wade was murdered? I would imagine I was driving General Sorensen and his wife home. No, Captain. You came to the party in your own car. The gate guard noted the license number, and if necessary, I can recall the general. No, no, I'm sorry, I forgot it's my fault. You see, I usually drive the general everywhere he goes. But this was a special occasion, wasn't it? You wanted to see Wade, and you wanted to see him alone. So you drove off, parked the car nearby, and then walked back. Isn't that so? No, Mr. Mason, that is not so. Tell me something, Captain Rivers. Isn't it true that you are an expert in unarmed defense? I suppose I am. And that if a man pulled a gun on you and was within your reach, it might be the last thing he ever did in this life? <laughs> I think that's uh, putting it a little strong. Is it? Why? Isn't that what really happened when you confronted Wade in the corridor of his house? He was surprised. He pulled his gun. Confronted by an angry man waving a gun, you reacted as you'd been trained to do. You killed him with a karate blow to the back of his neck. Harlan Wade's body was found in his own swimming pool. He was... He was dragged there, thrown into the water, after you discovered you'd killed him. This statue was just window dressing, wasn't it? You used it on his corpse to make it look like the murder weapon. Oh, you were lucky, weren't you? Lucky that the caterer's van was still on the estate. Lucky that there was an empty seat. Lucky that you could pose as just another temporary employee. Lucky to have gotten away undetected. Your Honor, this is pure speculation. Your Honor, may we have a moment? Yes, you may. Proceed, Mr. Mason. Captain Rivers. No. Now, you are way out of line, mister, and you can't prove any of this. I'm afraid I can. Captain Rivers, there's a bullet hole in the wall of the corridor where the murder took place. At my request this morning, the police removed a bullet from there. There are traces of fabric on it. Your Honor, all of this has absolutely nothing to do with me. Police at this moment are checking the jacket you wore to the party to see if those traces of fabric match it. Defense is prepared to prove that this bullet, uh, this bullet taken from the wall was fired from this gun, Harlan Wade's missing gun, the gun that you, Captain Rivers, ripped from him after he'd fired at you. There was a struggle, the gun was lost, but the barrel of this gun had your fingerprints on it. More than that, there is final proof that you killed Harlan Wade. A fresh bullet wound. Somewhere on your body, Captain Rivers, there is a fresh bullet well, thank you. All right. I did it. I killed him! No! I did it. I didn't mean to. But, sir, I don't regret it. And, yes, I waited for Wade that night in his house until after the party, because I was determined to get him off the general's back. I was determined. But before I could open my mouth, that man pulled a gun on me. Oh, let me, let me tell you about the wonderful Mr. Wade. 
That man, he feared and hated the whole world. And the world in return hated him, and rightfully so. That man was a disgrace to his profession, to our country, and most of all to humanity. And he set out to destroy one of our greatest patriots and one of our greatest soldiers. And the fight. The finest man that I have ever had the honor of knowing. And in the end, Harlan Wade destroyed himself. Justice. And as for you, Miss Bensie, all I could say is that if you're going to work for the devil, don't be surprised if you get burned. I'm sorry. Your Honor, the people move for a complete dismissal of all charges against the defendant. Case dismissed. Congratulations, Counselor. That was remarkable. Remarkable even for you. Well, a whole new start. Somewhere, I'm going to find a paper, I don't care how small, that will let me do my job the honest way. Harry, I'd like to thank you. Mr. Mason. On your way, both of you. Bye-bye. Right. Goodbye, dear. At last, we're alone. <laughs> um, Harry. I know who sent me the flowers, the champagne, and the perfume. Who? You. Why would I do that? Because Tuesday was my birthday. You felt sorry for me, being here so many miles from home. I admit nothing. <laughs> if you remember, after I was 39, I stopped counting my birthdays. Really? What about the pearls, the amethyst ring, and all the other things? Well... Does that mean you're going to return them when you get to be 97? <laughs> Absolutely.